Hello foodie friends, we're back again with another special cookbook. Now, like I teased in the episode uh, last week, I had saw this woman on a documentary on Amazon Prime and I instantly had to know everything about her. She seemed so fascinating. And of course, we are talking about Tasha Tudor. Now, she was one of the most prolific children's book illustrators of all time. She's got over 75 books to her credit, including all the illustrations that we see here in her own cookbook. She was a spectacular watercolorist and she's most famous for living on a farm in her older age and deciding that she was going to live as though it was the 1830s. And that meant no electricity, no running water, and even making her own clothes. So we'll kind of explore that a little bit further, but first, let's go ahead and get this ready and start cooking and see how her recipes taste. And welcome to the voiceover and the world of Tasha Tudor. First, we'll go ahead and gather up all we need. And if you'll notice, this book is actually inscribed. It was a Christmas gift given from one friend to another, and I'll go ahead and leave what the inscription says in the description box below if you would like to read it. First up, we'll chop our herbs and our onion. Tasha Tudor was a prolific cook and learned from an early age from her governess. She was born in Boston, Massachusetts in 1915 and took after her mother who was also an artist. She knew at a very early age that she wanted to become a book illustrator. And so she went on to become one of the most popular illustrators of her time. And now once your herbs and onion is ready, if you're using a rotisserie chicken, let's go ahead and put it through the food processor after we debone and skin it. Go ahead and melt your butter in an iron skillet, which Tasha would have loved as she loved anything antique. In her later years, she recreated an 1830s farm in Vermont, and she would live in that time period for the rest of her days. Now once your butter is melted, go ahead and add your flour, onion, garlic, your herbs, and your salt and pepper. Cook for a couple of minutes until it thickens. I used fresh herbs from my garden just as Tasha would have done. She was known for her large, beautiful gardens, full of flowers, vegetables, and herbs that she preserved and used throughout her cooking. Now you can go ahead and add your milk, and if you wish, a small piece of the Norris chicken bouillon. Go ahead and mix that together, and cook until it re-thickens. Now of course, we're using modern conveniences to make this dish. But Tasha Tudor would have cooked this on a wood stove. From firewood, she would have brought in herself and with no electricity. She preferred a more simple, rustic lifestyle and even raised several kinds of farm animals and made her own clothes. She was almost entirely self-sufficient. Now we'll go ahead and add the mixture in our iron skillet to our bowl of ground chicken. Mix that very thoroughly together and then set aside to allow it to cool. We will be forming these into small nuggets so we don't want it too hot to handle. And while that cools, we'll go ahead and get our potatoes peeled, sliced, and put in water on the stove. As stated before, Tasha Tudor was a prolific children's book illustrator. But she didn't just illustrate other people's books. She also illustrated and wrote several very popular ones of her own. One of her most popular was a book called The Corgiville Fair, featuring her favorite kind of dog of all time, corgis. 
She also continued to work well into her 80s, illustrating, giving interviews, and working her farm like the pioneers of old. Now that our chicken mixture is cool enough to handle, first go ahead and mix together your egg and water. Then we'll prepare our Ritz crackers. Go ahead and crush them into another plate. And of course you can do this any way you choose. I went ahead and used the bottom of a cup. But if you need to vent any frustrations, go ahead and use the Ziploc bag and rolling pin method. Now we'll divide our chicken into 10 to 12 little log-shaped portions. This should give you plenty for a large family or several leftovers. And we did find that the chicken was just as good the next day as it was the first day. So this would be a really good little meal prep recipe. Once your little nuggets are ready, first go ahead and roll them in your crushed crackers. Then roll them in your egg and water mixture. And to make them extra good, she says go ahead and roll them once again in the crackers. Next, we'll heat up our oil and deep fry the nuggets about two or three at a time. You don't want to overcrowd your pot as you'll risk them sticking together. They actually cook up pretty quick, so be ready with a plate with paper towels on it so you can let them drain. Tasha Tudor has become very popular worldwide. She rarely left New England, but has become very popular as far away as Japan, China, and South Korea. But in spite of her rise to fame, Tasha continued to love to live her simple life. And now when your potatoes are ready, we'll go ahead and drain the water. Now you can go ahead and warm your milk, butter, and cream cheese in a small saucepan before adding to your potatoes. But I generally add these things to my potatoes directly and mash them together as I go. Now I like to use a good old fashioned potato masher. But if you like creamier mashed potatoes, you can go ahead and use your food processor. We'll also go ahead and add our salt and pepper to taste. Then whip everything together with a wooden spoon. Usually I find I need to adjust the ingredients to a mashed potatoes to suit my own taste, but I found these proportions to be absolutely perfect and these mashed potatoes wonderfully tasty exactly as written. And now in memory of this fascinating woman, we'll dish up and serve this wonderfully wholesome and delicious meal. We are finally ready, and man, I really this good. is one of those recipes that I really just could not wait to pull out of the grease. So <laughs> <laughs> let's go ahead and try it while it's hot. That is wow. Mmm. Mmm. It's like the way a chicken nugget's supposed to taste. Oh <laughs> my gosh, yes! It's like, I mean, I don't want to say McDonald's chicken nuggets are good because they're kind of not. You know what I mean? Like, they're just, but it's like, it really is like the perfect chicken nugget. It is the perfect chicken nugget. Yeah. Absolutely perfect. Yeah. And it might be also because I used the rotisserie chicken. So you get a little bit more seasoning. Yeah, so I got a little bit more yeah. of a roasted flavor right. um, to it. But I'll tell you what, I okay, we've done a lot of chicken dishes. Mm -hmm. This, oh my gosh. It is really <laughs> This good. is top yeah. tier chicken dish. Yeah, definitely. And it's mostly, I think, because it's comfort food. It's not too complicated. Um, the flavors kind of burst into yeah. your mouth. You get like a lot of different layers of flavor and texture, which I really like. And, you know, in a way you think, oh, that can't be like that great. It's Ritz crackers and I'm, but you know what I mean? Yeah. Like it, it's like one of those kind of old fashioned recipes yeah. in a way where they used crackers and stuff like that. But 
it works. Yeah, it like, is really good. I yeah, know. I oh, I gotta take a second bite. I'm sorry. <laughs> mm hmm. Mm. I'll tell you what. And, and with a salad, like a really good salad. Yeah. This would just be a perfect, you know, or green beans or something like that. You could mm -hmm. round this out beautifully. Oh yeah, there's definitely like a lot of additions you can make that would be good. You know, oh my you could, gosh, yes. Even like a barbecue sauce or something maybe because it's Oh yeah. Nugget. You know, I, I mean, mean like, I, I don't think it needs it. I don't think it, it needs but, it though. Yeah. But I'm just saying like if you want a little bit of a different Yeah. You know, you can mix it up quite a bit. It can go with almost anything. Yeah. Just, yeah, it, this yeah. is extremely versatile, yeah. I think. And let me tell you something. I think if you put this on your table and cooked it for your family, there's not going to be one of these left. No. It, no. It's going to be gone. You I, won't have an unhappy family. Though. No, absolutely fact, not. you may end up having to make it a lot. You're probably going <laughs> to, yeah, this is probably going to be a favorite in your house. A new staple. Yes. yes. Yeah. I mean, it's probably going to be for us. Yeah. I mean, this is so, oh my gosh. Okay. Oh, especially if you got leftover chicken. Yeah. That you have no idea what to do with. Yeah. Put it in your food processor, grind it up and turn it into this. You will be so glad that you did. Yeah. So wow okay five stars yeah definitely. definitely mashed potatoes five stars i don't usually put cream cheese i've actually I i've never cream put cream cheese, cream no. cheese but there's something about the addition of the cream cheese that i think really smoothed it out really gave it like an extra layer of flavor that's really good um so i'll probably keep doing that yeah you know from now on yeah. um so yeah five stars on the mashed potatoes too now a lot of people probably do the cream cheese um Maybe but if you don't it. try it because it's yeah you're gonna love it it is good so wow okay so i am so impressed with this cookbook right out of the gate. And of course, we're gonna do one more with our Tea Time series, so we'll see how that stacks up, but if this is any indication, it's going to be awesome. Now, as for the cookbook itself, obviously this is getting five stars too. The recipes are not over complicated, and yeah, there's like, you could probably get, you know, mashed potatoes and stuff like that from Betty Crocker, you know, but that's kind of not what you're buying it for. You're actually buying it for her stories that she puts in front of each recipe. Um, she tells where she got the recipe, that kind of thing, and also her little twist on the recipe. Um, so she'll kind of tweak each one and make it different. These are also recipes that had come from her childhood you know, from uh, various people in her life. So we're talking recipes from the early 1900s um, because that's, you know, uh, when she was born. So these are some really historic yeah. and special recipes. I would definitely give this a pickup, especially if you watch that documentary. You're really gonna want this. Um, and I love her illustrations. I mean, just for her, especially if you're a watercolorist, if you're an illustrator, um, you probably have already heard of Tasha Tudor, but just in case you haven't, um, the cookbook just for her illustrations alone are gorgeous. Mm. She has a very kind of, I, it's, yeah, it's, it's whimsical, but it's also kind of, um, it's very 19, like early 1900s, kind of look mm. it's vintage that's what i'm kind of trying to go for it's a very vintage kind of watercolor look where she's creating scenes from historical time periods rather than kind of like what the dishes would look like now mm. do you know what i mean it, it's to me, it's like cooked on a wood at, stove yeah. or something like to that to me it almost looks like like the illustration like think i'm thinking of like um classic novel covers yes or, or like, little victorian postcards yeah stuff or like something that. like that yeah. yeah it's like kind of comes to mind like even like your more classic fantasy or like yeah like yeah alice in wonderland oh or something yes like that. well you know what I mean? yeah like, that's and kind she of like did like flavor. illustrate like the secret garden oh, and really? stuff like that, that yeah might be why, then. yeah <laughs> so she did have like yeah. kind of that 
early whimsical, yeah. you know, childhood nostalgia kind of thing uh, going for it. And so it just makes it so much more fun to cook out of it and read it and look at these recipes because she literally illustrated you know, pictures for the recipes okay. and that kind of thing. So it's really cool. Yeah. Um, I would definitely give this a pickup. I bought this used on Amazon. It wasn't that expensive, and I'm so glad I did. So, wow. Looking forward to trying some other stuff. Yeah, yeah. I am too. Like, I'm going to be looking through here and be like, what else can I pull out of here for yeah. dinner? Because this is awesome. Um, now, stay tuned for next week because we're actually going to be looking at a special cookbook that she did not write, but she did illustrate it. And it is um, foods based on the Secret Garden, oh. uh, one of the very first books that she illustrated that she kind of got acclaim for. Yeah. It's one of her most popular illustrations. Right. And also, while I'm thinking about it, there is two Tasha Tudor cookbooks. Okay, I'm going to list this one in the description box below because there is another one that was. Uh, put together by a grandchild of hers after her death, it did not get good reviews mm. on Amazon. Um, so I picked with this one. This is the one she actually wrote and put together uh, of her recipes. So stay tuned for next week because, like I said, we'll be delving into Tasha Tudor's secret garden. You won't want to miss it. Thanks for watching this week. We'll see you later. Bye. If you like this video, make sure to hit the like button and hit the subscribe button for future videos. In the meantime, here are two videos you may enjoy. Thanks for watching.